This is a headgum podcast. Boo. <laughs> it's a spooky Halloween spooky. episode. Spooky. Ho, ho, ho. Spooky. 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 <laughs> spooky. I'm a ho. I'm a spooky dude. <laughs> Uh, this episode of If I Were You, uh, where we all kill ourselves at the end, oh come on, is brought to you by Distilled Jeans. Distilled, D S T L D. Distilled. That's right. Distilled um, without the vowels it has revolutionized the fashion industry by creating timeless luxury grade denim. So you get jeans that would cost you hundreds. I'm sorry, would cost you hundreds of dollars. Uh, starting at 65 bucks. Yeah, dude. You guys know jeans? They're yeah. kind of the most popular pants. So, if you're interested in getting that luxury denim for a fraction of the price, it's dstld.com to find your perfect fa- pair with a perfect fit. Are they blue jeans? Blue jeans, baby. Black jeans, too. Oh, God, I hate you. You married a music flan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I've made two mistakes. But uh, as you know, every ad has to have a little bit of secret sauce, some incentive to get your ass there. So if you go to dstld.com, distilled.com, slash if I were you right now, you'll get $10 off your first pair. So that's $10 off their already low prices. If you go to dstld.com, slash if I were you. $10 off your first pair. Sounds good to moi. Uh, half of how you look is how your pants fit. So get your jeans right. That's five letters. D-S-T-L-D dot com slash if I were you. Why don't we get right into this spooky episode Ooh, with kind of a scary uh, uh, theme song. Uh, really? You better believe things got real. Let's get started right now. If I were you, here's what I <laughs> that was actually recorded by John Thorpe from Newcastle. Not Pope John Paul. I uh, guess he's dead, right? Uh, but I actually don't know. <laughs> okay. I don't know anything. Um, but the submission is a rewrite of an old Icelandic hymn called Heir Hymna Smior. Oh my Smithor. God. Of course. Uh, originally composed by Kolbin Tumasen. A li- Icelandic hymn. An Icelandic hymn. I like the hymnal Yes Dude. Yes Dude. We should start a church or something. That would be cool. Because I'm actually beginning to feel like a rap god. Rap god. All the people <laughs> from the front to the back nod. You shouldn't feel like that. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't feel like a rap surf. You should feel like a rap peasant, mm-hmm. a rap nobody. Or just a regular peasant, regular nobody. Uh, so thanks to John Thorpe for writing that. He says cheers. He says come to Belfast. All right. Belfast? Belfast? Is that the one in, is that in Scotland? Yeah, sure. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right. We're back. We're back from our tour. Uh Completely decompressed. Yeah, dude. Uh, not feeling hungover anymore. Ankles slightly better. I mean, things are looking absolutely up. Good stuff. We got a show. We got a show in Los Angeles tomorrow. Oh, yeah. If you're listening to this on Monday, Halloween, we have a show the first day of November, 1-1-1. One, 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 yep. Uh, at USC. Information about that show. It's a free show. Free show. In L.A. Yeah, no excuses. No excuses. Uh, information at ifireyoushow.com or jakeandamir.com. Mm-hmm. Damn, Daniel. <laughs> oh, God. So that's sort of like a meme. And uh, what else do I got here? Op, 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 uh, Daniel op. style. <laughs> oh, white vans. <laughs> op. <laughs> Vance, 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 Vance. <laughs> Can't you see that being an ad for something? Uh, God, for what? Yeah. Vans? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Vans finally got Psy in an ad. 
It took them this long to get Psy. I think the Psy Pistachio commercial will go down in some sort of cultural time capsule where Pistachios had commercials, Psy was a spokesman. I didn't even know that. I don't remember that at all. Yeah, I remember Psy, but he was like in a plump little lime green tuxedo dancing About during a Super pistachios? Bowl. Episode. Yeah, dancing during <laughs> for Pistachios. Good Lord. But enough about the, the the past. This is the future. This is the present. This is Halloween 2016. Uh, people have been emailing us their sticky situations at show at gmail.com. And we're going to do our darn best or and our darn best to help very good. them out. What? Very good. Yeah? Darn best, darn best. <laughs> That's very good, actually. You are a rap peasant. Holy shit. I am beginning to feel one. Uh, these are emails that have come in over the course of the last couple of weeks. They're fresh. They're topical. I'm going to give you a choice. Do you want to talk about losing your virginity first or cats? Cats! Cats! Mew! All right. What's this guy's name? Um, 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 um. Oh, you know, let's. Heathcliff! I was going to. We've got some new podcasts. Oh. So we'll name this guy uh, Eugene. Oh, from the Dumbbells Podcast. From the Dumbbells Podcast. Which is a fitness podcast that Jake and I are on the first episode of. If you Talked like about fitness jacked. and comedy, this is the podcast for you, the Dumbbells on HeadGum. Well, Eugene Cordero and uh, Ryan Sanger, two very funny guys. All right, go ahead. Uh, he, my friend has two cats. He had to move, and his new landlord only let him keep one. He asked if I would keep his other cat for a few uh, months until he moves again. So I agreed to take the cat without telling my girlfriend who lives with me. She was upset at first, but she has since come around and loves the cat like it was her firstborn. But my friend is moving out soon and is almost ready to reclaim his cat. I told my girlfriend and we have to give him back soon and she got really upset. I'm going to miss him too much, but it's only been a couple months. How can I give how can I give my friend his cat back while causing the least amount of stress to my girlfriend? Hmm. So he's cat sitting. The girlfriend got so attached to the cat, she doesn't want to give the cat back. Yeah. But the cat goes back the, the very, very next, next day. day. <laughs> uh well, it's you know, it's tough. She had the cat for a few months. It wasn't just like a, a weekend or yeah. something, you know? This was a, an attachment. At, Although, a, at what point are you entitled to keep the cat? Yeah, at what point does the cat become yours? Yeah. This actually reminds me of a dark... I thought of a dark short story or a short film that I could write. Okay. Uh, it's... Let's say the year is 2063. All right. So and 15 years from now. Yeah. Imagine an African-American 15-year-old girl is living in a, a, a British couple's house in London. 15-year-old parent- African-American girl living in a British couple's house yeah. in London in 2063. Yeah. Uh, she loves her life. Uh, everything's going well. According in her brain, that British couple, that's mom and dad. They adopted her. And right. she loves him. She has no interest in see, seeing who her biological parents are. Okay. Knock on the door. Biological parents. That child was abducted by a, some sort of British kidnapping scheme to bring that daughter when she was a baby to London. So oh. she's not even supposed to be there at all. So she's like, thank God you're here. We found you. You get to come back home. But she doesn't want to go back home because her kidnappers, quote unquote, are her mom and dad that she loves and respects very much. Ooh. So this is like some sort of weird, twisted psychological thriller. Like your parents aren't who you thought they were. Right. Like Not only they're... that, but they're actually kidnappers, abductors. So right. You know, there could be another twist, too, that's like uh, these pe- the, the people that come and let her – like her real – her biological parents yeah. who like – tell her that her parents are sadistic kidnappers yeah that like maybe her her actual biological parents died a long time ago but they these people are impersonating them oh to get her to to and they're the abductors is this what like, annie was trust is this like a dark annie uh i think dad uh daddy warbucks was a kidnapper yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Because I remember seeing the new Jamie Foxx Annie, and it was sort of like this, where Annie got used to that posh lifestyle, but it was not like a kidnapping. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, actually, you're right. Then her parents come back. Because he offered a reward. Well, right. It wasn't her real parents. It was just like fakers that came to get the reward. So this would be like a bleak, not a bleak, but like a dark, twisted horror, since this is a Halloween episode version of Annie. Is there any reason that she had to be African American? Uh, No, I just thought it it helped differentiate the owners. I mean, diversity is important in Hollywood. Absolutely. And I think it's super important, not just in Hollywood, but in Bollywood. Like uh, every, like every, yeah. And so you think more white people should be in Bollywood? Films. I do. I think that more white people should be in Bollywood films just so that um, Bollywood gets a little more diversity. I mean, what this a is dumb like dumb cause you've taken up. And it is, it is a life passion of mine. So I'll Insane. be blo- I'm blo- I'm blogging and I'm doing a lot of live tweeting of Bollywood yeah. movies and I, I don't see know. you have a very unpopular account. <laughs> <laughs> I have negative 8 followers, which is sort of rare. Insane. I don't know how that happened. You're still on Vine somehow. <laughs> Vine. All right, Pine. Uh, all right, but let's focus on this cat situation. Sure. Uh, it seems like the easy way to do is get the girlfriend a new cat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, two new cats. Oh, replace one cat with two. I feel like there's a chance that the friend just doesn't actually want that second cat back. Right? Oh, you, you can ask like, to keep it. Yeah. Ask okay. to keep it, and if he says no, you replace the cat with a few other cats. Uh, I think that's solid. Although cats, I hear, are like, I didn't grow up with cats, but I hear like some are nice, some are mean, some are angry, some are fun, some are yeah. friendly. You you definitely bond with some of them. My mom gave away our cats when we were little. Just gone? We would like go on vacation and someone would house sit the cat and then we would come back and they'd be like, oh, like my daughter really fell in love with the cat. My mom would be like, keep it. Keep it. We had like 10 cats. Yeah. So like when they disappeared, it was fine. My mom did that with my Halloween candy one year. Another Halloween story. She gave away your Halloween candy? Yeah. Like I went trick or treating one year. I think I was in fifth or sixth grade. And then after flag football practice, she just fucking dumped it on the field and the kids like just had a free for all. And I was like, what the hell are you doing? That's my fucking candy. Jeez, that's insane. Yeah. Was my it like a like, punishment? No, my mom's like, whatever. It's like, you're not going to eat all that candy. I can buy you new candy. You've had Costco for like two bucks. Like, if you really need the candy, like, she's in her brain. Did you? Which I is mean, sort of what I feel now. I'm like, what is it? Like, the fun is trick or treating. Like, you don't have, need to eat this. It was almost candy. traumatizing as a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She didn't, she didn't have the part of the brain where it's like, oh, he did probably you, did. Did you like, hold that against her for a while? Uh, I probably let it go late last week. So I'm, I'm, we're totally past that now. And we've been working on it in group therapy and stuff. Wow. Yeah. Just her, me, and all the kids that ate my candy. <laughs> yeah. They were on my kill list for a while. <laughs> so I know for a fact Doug Greenspan took a milk dud that he has yet to repay. I also didn't even like <laughs> So candy. I fucked his wife. <laughs> <laughs> so we're even on that end. Uh, all right. That was the cat question. Okay. Uh, here's kind of a real one. Really? Yeah. Pray tell. It's called, this next question is from a lady. I Ooh. think she's, the subject is how I usually say that. Uh, the name will be Susanna Wolf. Susanna Wolf, who's the host of What Did I Miss? A news and politics podcast that you and I also were the guest of. So the theme here is if you want more of us, while still introducing yourself to another HeadGum podcast, whether it be fitness or current events, the, we got you covered. Yeah, uh, we, we got real political on that podcast. And you can go to headgum.com and uh, find those podcasts wherever podcasts are sold. That one, I think, is $80 a month. That's not bad. <laughs> um, what if we just did that? We just started <laughs> valuing podcasts and selling them. Bad <laughs> business plan. Right. Uh, all right, this lady, Susanna Wolf writes, I just turned 30, and the large majority of my friend group has reached a point in their lives where they're getting married, having kids, and buying houses. I haven't reached those milestones yet myself, though I would very much like to. I'm single right now, and it may be a while before I do. In the meantime, I can't help but find it difficult to see my friends and peers moving forward in their lives. What I feel is jealousy. I'm not some diva, but a feeling of being stuck or left behind. My question is, have you ever found yourself in a place personally or professionally where you felt like you were falling short of your peers and how did you deal with it thanks for reading my question i've been a fan for years and i feel like we're old friends at this point love samantha no susanna susanna wolf yes uh cool all right uh have you ever felt like that yeah i think in showbiz quote unquote or like comedy or entertainment every time you 
fail, it's really easy to see who succeeded at what you failed at. Yeah. So you'll get close to getting a part, and instead they'll go with someone else, and then there'll be an article prom- like talking about that guy. Yeah. And, then, like, and all of your praising. friends will comment on that article saying yeah. how nice and talented that guy is yeah. and how much he deserves it. And that even goes for writing jobs. Like I know a lot of people that submitted to shows didn't get them and then their friends got them. And that's like, oh, you deserve it. You're the number one yeah. guy at that job. Even all of our friends that we used to write with at College Humor all went on and got t- late night TV writing jobs. Yeah, really cool jobs. Do you feel left behind by those people? Uh, I guess in a way, like I feel like... Uh, motivated to try to keep up like i don't want to be um the guy that came out of that class and is like oh everyone did well except for that guy yeah 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 so like in that way i feel a little bit stuck or left behind and not that we haven't done anything like we also have our own things going on but it's easy to point and be like why why didn't i get that far why didn't i take that path yeah why that I one's that? the best yeah. this person's the furthest ahead right <laughs> uh sarah yeah, is of the course. person that's for Yeah, we all yeah, know that. Literally yeah. head writer. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's that's the winning. By definition. Yeah. Uh, do you ever feel stuck or left behind? Um, I guess I, I may be a little bit less so because I am fortunate enough that I was younger than all of our friends at College Humor. Oh, interesting. I always felt like the so baby you did, you of You looked them. at the age. Yeah. So it's like, oh, that person just did that, but I also have two years to catch up. Right. Interesting. Um. But, yeah, I guess I don't I, – I mean, I think I feel pangs of that, but never stuck in a rut of it. Like right. when somebody – when I see a Deadline article of like someone getting a really awesome uh, show picked up or something, I'm, I, I'm not like, oh, God, I haven't done anything. I, I am like just, fuck, I yeah. got to do something. I want that to – I want that article to be about me one day. Yeah, I think at, le- at least now since our pilot's gotten passed on, we've like stayed busy enough. We always have like – uh, a hope in the uh, hope in in the back pocket, a plate spinning somewhere. Yeah, like oh, this could go forward, and if it does, everything would be awesome. Yeah, I've been I've been learning to enjoy the maybe, like living in a world where maybe is better than no. Like yeah. they haven't passed yet. That's a great place to be. I got opportunities here. I got opportunities here. Sure, ninety eight percent of them will be a dead end. But at the very least, there are avenues to be explored. Yeah. I think we're lucky to be in a position where there are maybes. Uh, but would you say this is jealousy? She's like, what I feel isn't jealousy, but a feeling of being stuck. Or is it like micro jealousy? I guess it's micro jealousy. It's, I mean, it's looking at yourself through the lens of – or looking at other people through the lens of yourself yeah. in some way. I think the easy, an easy way to do combat that feeling is like – take joy in what you have that they don't so they're getting married and having kids you're single think about all the advantages that has yeah. you go home you could do whatever you want you don't have to uh deal like with cry a alone in your room yeah and instead of listening to a baby cry you get to sleep in as much as you want you get to set your own schedule so you look forward to the things that you do have that they don't have anybody buying a house they have to deal with mortgage an alarm system, home insurance, property tax. Yeah, we did just buy houses. <laughs> yeah, so we know that shit. I would sell mine in a heartbeat if I could. Uh, so you, why don't you, instead of looking at your neighbor's yard, uh, think about what they're thinking about you. And even though it's different, uh, you can justify to yourself that what I have is good in a different way. Yeah, that's that's solid advice. I would say even to... To just like, I don't know. It's almost not like not even thinking about it in terms of what's in your yard versus their yard. Just about like what's in the world. Like be happy for them. That's not your path. That's right. something that's good for someone that you care about. And then stay busy with your own things. Like there's no reason that these that their happiness can't be, or like they, their success means your failure, and their happiness means your uh, loneliness could all be good right and another another way to that i think about that like that you can per, that can perhaps be helpful is like this mathematical thing where it's like if they're Ugh, if they're mathematical first what? place out of a thousand and you're like third Ugh. there's still so many people that are behind you it's like yeah you guys might I hate numbers yeah you <laughs> no, <laughs> they, they might be a little bit ahead of you but then like look behind you and like look how much worse it can be 
That's like, true. Not not just being alive right now is great, but like think about all those people that were born in other countries that have nothing going on, that have to struggle implicitly. They can't even escape it, even if they wanted to. They would switch with you in a heartbeat. And the one issue that you're dealing with is the fact that you're single versus married is not that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things. Right. Across a huge spectrum, you're very close to your friends. It feels like almost dangerous to me to, to look at things like, hey, at least I'm not getting beheaded by ISIS right now. Yeah. Like, that's true. But it's also, I, I don't like to minimize anybody's uh, dis discomfort or sadness. You know, like, of course, things could always be way worse. Like, yeah. Hey, you're not dying. That's true. Yeah, maybe you have health. Yeah, but I feel like rather than focusing on uh, how worse, how much worse it could be, I, I don't know. I, I I think if you focus on just like how good it is without thinking about how bad it is, or like, or if you are thinking that it's sad, then you can feel that and then <laughs> move on. Yeah. But to me, saying like my life could be way worse is almost uh, it's minimizing it too much. And I love it. <laughs> so those are two different ways to deal with it. Uh, let's say thank you as well to me undies before going on to the next question. Talk about comfortable freaking underwear. My God, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. The Modal is total. <laughs> total. <Comfort. laughs> uh, it is made out of a material called Modal that's twice as soft as cotton. And if it was just comfortable, that would be enough. But it's not would just be comfortable. Enough. It would be enough. It's also incredibly stylish. So you look cool when you wear the comfortable shit. You look feel stylish. Better. Be good. <laughs> it's me undies. The movie. Uh, their prices aren't very high, and shipping is free in the U.S. and Canada. And and if you get a subscription or a single pair, you can get twenty percent off your first order when you go to meundies.com slash Jake or meundies.com slash Amir. Let us know which coupon code you end up using. Ideally, it would be the person that you find better at life. So consider it a vote. And my name for... is spelled J A K E. That's right. And mine is obviously A M E A R. No, wait, you're spelling it all wrong. You're rigging <laughs> oh, it. A M E A R. This um, whole ear. thing is rigged. Um, ear. <laughs> Voter fraud. Uh, so meundies.com slash Jake or slash Amir. You can check it out for yourself. I mean, this stuff is fly, it is dope. And it's not just underwear. They also got sweats. They also got shirts. They also got hoodies. What? Yeah. It's a lot, lot of comfortable wear. Uh, so check them out. They've been a sponsor of ours for a while. Could be a good gift for a If I Were You fan in your life. Truth. Hey, these are underwear, but they're also the me undies that they won't stop fucking talking about. Damn right, dude. And uh, I never will. And if they stop paying me. <laughs> MeUndies.com slash Jake or MeUndies.com slash Amir. Enjoy that undies. Uh, that Trump talk or in this ad reminded me that we made a new Jake and Amir video. That's true. Uh, for the first time in how long was it? Over a year and a half, year eighteen and months. Half. It feels like a long time. Yeah, we we thought got Jake, back in the saddle. Jake and Amir, Donald Trump is too good of an idea, too rich of fertile soil to ignore. So we just did another episode. Yeah, we could do one. Dusted off the old laptop. Yeah, wrote it. Very Shot quickly, it. we the words just flowed out of us. Trump had been writing it for us, really. It's amazing. I mean, like that video was twice as long as any other Jake and Amir that we usually would have made, and we still left a lot on the cutting room floor. Oh, like, yeah. We didn't even talk about the 10 sexual uh, accusers coming no. forward. We didn't talk about hashtag drain the swamp. We didn't talk about uh, his comments against the uh, Mexican judge, <laughs> the mocking of a disabled I even, reporter. I don't think I even mentioned the wall. Uh, yeah. I mentioned immigration, uh, yeah. but not the wall specifically. I mean, Jesus Christ. We could do 10 more Trump episodes, but if we Trump, won't. If Trump wins, we have to come back entirely. Oh, man. That's that's another reason to root for the guy. Oh, God. Actually, never mind. No, we won't do it. <laughs> uh, so the video is on College Humor's YouTube uh, channel right now. It's called Jake and Amir. Donald Trump. Uh, did it feel weird to be – did it feel like we had taken 18 months off or did it – was it just like, oh, we're back? Uh, it felt like – it felt like – there was. It felt like we had taken some time off. I think the finished product looks like we. It, it doesn't look like we missed a beat. I don't think. Yeah, and we don't look that much older. It's not like ten years later. It's like a friends reunion where like Joey is now like gray haired and kind yeah, of bigger. Yeah. I feel like we look relatively similar to what we did the when we were shooting the videos. That's so, probably true. Um. So it's you know. 
How did it feel for you? Was it hard? Uh, You had to do more acting than I did, I think. This was an insane Amir one. Right. I think once I got in the groove of it, I did feel a little embarrassed, like, shooting. Like, it was almost like... Sixth year college student coming back, yeah, and like, yeah, no, I could still, I could still hang with you guys, right? It's, well, it's funny we know a lot less people in the college Huber office now too. Yeah, so like we're at least before we were yelling <laughs> stupid shit. It was in front of our friends, yeah. And they like been, they had seen it for a while. Now we're yelling it in front of uh, funny strangers. Mm-hmm. So I felt uh, a little bit aware of what I was yelling. Because you never want to be yelling and then also be not funny. You can yeah. yell and it's funny, but you if have you're to yell screaming, pussy a lot for that video. Yeah, I liked yelling pussy. Yelling pussy was good, but everything <laughs> else is a little off-putting. I think. Uh, cool. I wanted to mention that video is doing well. By the way, I saw it was trending. Did you know that YouTube has trending videos now? No way, really. Yeah, it was like a top ten trending video on That's YouTube. That's dope. How many views did it have? It has uh, half a million in a day. Fuck yeah. And if all those people again just bought me undies, wow! What a what a wild ride Can that would be. Can you even imagine? Us. So much modal, not enough in the world. Total modal. <laughs> uh, all right, should we answer some more cues? Uno mas, or actually a couple more. Whatever you want to do. Yeah, we got time. Uh, the problem is when I loaded the Trump video to look at it on my computer, mm-hmm. it froze. Yeah, my computer. So right now I'm just sort of stalling. Uh, Got it, of course. And now, you know when you click a lot of buttons and then, like, nothing happens and then they all happen at the same time, like, oh, really quickly? No. That is, is your, do you have an old computer? No, I have a new computer, actually. Really? I just got lots of shit open. I mean, tabs on tabs on tabs. Are you thinking about buying a new MacBook Pro or no? No, this one's this one's new enough for me. This that, is that, I got like a year ago. screen shit, though. I'm probably going to do it. Yeah, you should pull the trigger. I would Can be I want jealous. an iPad? Is that crazy? An iPad mini? <laughs> I don't know. Do I like iPads? Uh, no, I think, I think it's another thing that you don't need because you can use, use your phone. When would you use an iPad and not your phone? I don't know. There's something just kind of sleek to me about like walking in, laying on a couch, reading an article on an iPad. Yeah, I guess that's a cool look. And especially if you can use it as like a remote control for your TV. Oh yeah. So you're like reading an article on a nice couch. Oh yeah. Well, the article is not about couches. You're on a nice couch reading an article. Right, and then you're like, "Oh, let's watch a let's Netflix and chill." <laughs> yeah, so you click a button, the article minimizes, and then Netflix. The, light, pops the up. lighting, yeah, the lighting changes because you got the Philip Hue light bulbs. Yeah, the smart light bulbs. Oh man, my house is gonna be fucking. Oh, it's a smart house, it's smarter than you, I think. It's, well, take it easy, because <laughs> I can also turn shit off. <laughs> Me and Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> I can't understand you. Uh, all right. Here's uh, the exact opposite of the last problem, which was a sweet lady who was just a little bit lost in life. Classic evil man question. This one's called Cam Models Sucking Me Dry and I Do Not Know Why. All right. <laughs> let's give this one to – is there another new dude podcast on our network? Uh, yeah. I thought there was another podcast that we did. Um, what's a new show that's straight balling? Uh, oh, Ian Carmel's All yeah. Fantasy Everything. Where we drafted, uh, we had a fantasy draft for sandwiches. We right. all made uh, teams of our five favorite sandwiches. I think yeah. I won. Well, of course you think you won. It was your well, team. So did the Twitter poll. <laughs> no, Twitter poll actually had Carmel on top. Well, Reddit thinks I won. Well, the whole poll was rigged. I'll tell you that right now. A lot of people are complaining. I actually think I'm winning. <laughs> so it's How is that rigged. a good thing that you think that? <laughs> You're going to be wrong then. All right. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. What's the name? Oh, yeah. Ian Carmel writes Hey, dudes. Day one listener, second time writing in. Here's my sticky situation. I've always been fond of jerking it to cam models, but recently I've been trying to save up for a new laptop and pay for school as I am a second year college student. My problem is I am throwing cash and coin at this cam mistress that I don't necessarily have. As I jerk off to them in their in their cam room, they plead and beg that someone tip them. So me being the grave giver, uh, me being the giver and hopeless romantic that I am, I give in. I really don't want to tip. Uh, I really don't want to tip, but I feel bad as I am just here masturbating while they moan my name. I guess I could stick to porn, but it's just not the same as a live smoke show begging you for a, my huge load in their mouth. My question is, how do I resist the temptation to stop these diva models from sucking me dry? I'm currently in the library writing this to you, 
you two Jews. As a hot student li- librarian shelves some books, how do I approach her and ask her out as well? <laughs> Should I just find a real girlfriend instead so I can please my needs, so she can please my needs? Any help would be greatly appreciated. Love, Ian. All right. First of all, not a real great reason to find a girlfriend just so she can please your needs. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you please your needs for now? And you can have a girlfriend when you actually care about her. Is this, your, is this a hole in your porn knowledge, the live cam? Yeah, I don't fuck with the live cam because I, I, I don't get any pleasure out of that like live interaction. To me, that's like too... Too personal. Yeah. So if somebody gave you a free me. hundred m- minutes of live cam, would you test it out out of curiosity? I'd, probably t- t- I'd test it out out of curiosity maybe. But I, I don't think that I like... I, I would not like being in a in a room with somebody uh, or a, on a cam with somebody where they're like looking at me and I can see them and they're asking me like what <laughs> I want. So why do some people love that? I don't know. Well, maybe some people are like not shy in that situation. They get off to uh, being like dominant or assertive or, you know, or the vice versa. And they're like, they like to be dominated and they like being able to tell somebody what they want. Yeah. I've never obviously done this live cam stuff either, but uh, that's more to be expected. I would say people would assume you have, and I yeah. haven't. No. Uh, so this guy is saying he doesn't want to tip them. Is that how it works with tips? I I, have, I literally have no idea how it works. I think I I think it, um, some cams work differently. There's like some where you like pay to go into a private room with somebody. Maybe some are like public and they operate on tips. Yeah, it's like a karaoke situation. Uh, <laughs> I know I've seen like porn sites that just have uh, recorded set like cam sessions that just will pl- replay them. Like, what's the difference? Oh, Can't you just I wonder if there's a money in a porn site where you get a girl to do this shit and then you either digitally insert people's names based on what they are or you just record it. You know, like when you go to a gift shop and they have like those license plates with like well, the top 200 it, right? names. They say your name. Right. So, like, this would be like, oh, Justin, I really love you, Justin. So, like, you choose Justin porn, and then it's like a woman telling Justin off, and then you don't know if it's live or not. This is the future of VR. Yeah. So, like, so you either record every permutation of of noises so it can build a name, or you record, like, the top 200 names, and you can choose. Like, this guy maybe. This might be the future of porn. Like, some kind of weird science type thing where, like,. You put goggles on and the person knows your full name. Yeah. Yeah. I only get off when they start fucking screaming my own social security number at me. It's so hot. It's so fucking hot. How did you know that? It's so hot. Do you work for Credit Karma? Uh, so how do you feel? Uh, what's the question specifically? Uh, how do I resist the temptation over these models to suck me dry? I guess you could like not tip. Yeah. Block the site. I don't know, man. Like, isn't regular porn enough? Isn't that enough? You're already jerking it to he's into people findom. fucking. <laughs> he needs. To, he needs to get cucked. Uh, yeah. Is there? I I just don't even know. There are sites where you could just like bar, like tip with not real money. Oh, that's good. Uh, but I guess that I guess no, because that'd be a pretty <laughs> bad idea for a porn site. <laughs> Bitcoin only non actual currency. Uh, I'm currently in the library. How do I approach her and ask her out as well? I would say minimize this question before you walk over there. Yeah. You don't want her to see this. Numero uno. And doesn't it seem like these are two different things? Like, even if he had a girlfriend, he would still want this stuff? It seems yeah, like you not... don't... It doesn't matter how, like, in love you are with somebody. You still like to look at porn. Right. Uh, the cam things, it's it's dangerous. You have. I think the way to do it is just really... It's almost like dieting or something, where, like, you want to give yourself... Uh, a cheat day or something like cold turkey oh no i mean like i think that you don't have to say you're never going to do it just do it sparingly say like i'm only going to use a can i'm going to splurge when i splurge yeah i'm going to splurge and splurge for christmas or for to treat myself if i get a good grade on this test then i'll like (laughs) Spend some money. It's, I, it's almost like going to a strip club or something. Yeah, like, it's like having a really cool dad. So it's like if you make your grades, I'll give you some uh, some sessions with the live cam girls. Yeah, why, like. don't, why don't you try that? Just say, I, I set some goals, and if you achieve them, then you reward yourself. But treat it as treat it as like a dessert or something, yeah. not as like a 
something you have, you're going to do every day. Yeah, it's like you don't want to get to the point in your life where you're eating ice cream at the end of every dinner. Suddenly, mm-hmm. it just starts to taste like unflavored ice milk. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not a place you want to be. You really can't jerk off to that at all. Uh, we got one more question, but we also have one more sponsor to thank. So thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. Squapa. You know how sometimes in your life you're going to reach a point where you're going to have to either build a website for yourself or for a friend or mm. for an, uh, uh, an older relative of yours? Oh, yeah, buddy. Like your dad's like, you know, I think I need a website for my business. I'm going to ask my son or daughter to do it because they're good at computers. My I dad, don't know. Dad, you have a crooked business. <laughs> you rob people blind. You're you charge rotten. them up the wazoo. And now you can build a website for them. Uh, whether it's a beautiful gallery, a professional blog, even an online store, Squarespace can build it all. And it's easy. And it's beautiful. They got commerce tools and customer support. So you might not need to build it now, but just remember squarespace.com slash if I were you when you do build it. Not only that, but Squarespace gives you a free custom domain whenever you build your or buy a year of their product. So you get a custom domain free for a year when you sign up for a year of Squarespace. What you're thinking is there's no good domain names available. Uncorrect you are. Uncorrect indeed, because every time we endorse uh, Squarespace, we give you two available dot coms that you can purchase if you act fast at the time of recording and what's yours is this butter.com it's what's sort of that? like i can't believe it's not butter but uh-huh. it's for a new butter service called is this butter oh so you can't you're just, you're, in, you're still in disbelief that it's butter or is, not yeah like but. i can't believe it's not butter and then also in between so butter i can't believe it's not butter and then in between that is is this butter and that's for all the butter that you genuinely <laughs> don't know if it's butter you're or legit not. confused right margarine butter i don't use that butter <laughs> okay. you could put milk up if it's like a tumbler if it's a bl- or not a tumbler yeah if it's a but if it's a blog right. if it's a blog <laughs> yeah. then we just yeah you just post things on there and <laughs> okay. you're like is this butter okay and then people could you do like a q and a with it of course you could link it to your twitter got it I understand. I'm still pitching. <laughs> I know. This is I want to get to mine, though. All right, go ahead. Queds. Duh. <laughs> Sorry, I threw up. <laughs> Queds. Q-U-E-D-S. Dot com, baby. That's a five-letter domain. Queds.com. Easy Queds. to say. Queds.com. Easy to spell, actually. It's kind, of, it's kind of cool, and it can be... It's ambiguous and open-ended, because Queds can be anything. Queds can be a game. Queds can be a drug. Queds can be a blog. It can be a celebrity name. We don't know what It could Queds be a is. lifestyle. And maybe someday somebody famous named Michael Queds will want that website, and you can just extort him for all he's worth. Finally. Uh, so if you want to buy Queds.com or IsThisButter.com or any custom domain, uh, you get it for free with a year of Squarespace. And you can start your free trial today at Squarespace.com. Enter offer code if I were you to get 10% off your first purchase. Toda. Squarespace. Set your website apart. Boy. One last question. Mm hmm. Hell yeah. This person is losing his virginity. All right, that person's podcast is... Jamie Lee. Jamie Lee, best of the worst. This is a a man, but imagine that the man is named Jamie. Guys, really need your advice. There's this girl I used to hook up with pre-college. We were, quote, friends with benefits until she said she liked me, so we stopped doing that. Recently started talking to... uh, I recently started talking to her again. It's been getting steamy, and we've talked about having sex next time we hang out. The thing is, it would be both of our first times. I moved away from New Jersey to North Carolina, and I don't really have feelings for her. I feel like this might turn into the same situation four years ago, but I feel like there's an emotional connection from her that isn't there anymore, so maybe not. If I do see her again, should we just do it? Do I give my virginity to her or save it for someone meaningful? Do I risk leading her on again, which I admitted was a douchey thing of me to do, although it seems like this would be no strings attached? Should I keep hanging on to this option or cut her off? Any help would be appreciated. Love, Jamie. All right, Jamie. Uh, What do you think? Sounds like he's not ready to have sex. Uh, I would say this is pretty good for a first time. Like, it's a friend that you've hooked up with before. Like, it might not be super meaningful, but, like, I would say... 
you're you're you can take it's like if you study for a test and the professor walks up to you at the beginning of the test and it's like hey i'll give you a b right now if you get the hell out of here you're like oh maybe i'll just take the sure b rather than wait and hope to beat that score so this lady is a sure pretty good this is a pretty good way to lose your virginity to a friend uh you can beat it potentially perhaps but you can also do a lot worse so maybe it is to just better to rip off the band-aid, sort of get through that virginity to the first, the first sexual encounter with a friend, uh, even though it's not quote-unquote meaningful, it's still, I think, better than bad. So I say, go for it. I think if, it's, if you're uh, this confused and thinking so much, then you, maybe it just sort of goes to show that you're not quite ready. Don't cut me off. <laughs> you were totally done talking. <laughs> Right. You also, I don't know how old this guy is, but you're telling, <laughs> you're telling a young, a yeah, young kid to 11. go. He's 11. He's <laughs> 11. God man. damn it, dude. <laughs> Fuck me. Yeah, I don't, I may, I don't, Shit. I'm not usually uh, responsible, but I think that it sounds like he's not quite ready for sex. No, he said he hooked up with her pre-college. So he's at the very least in college. That's, that's good. That's good. But he might be a Doogie Hauser type. Uh, Med school at 14 shit. I, I think that uh, you should have sex with somebody that you know that you want to have sex with. It's a... I, looking back, you know, virginity is not like... I guess I have the uh, the story that I tell live, but... Take I, you out of the equation. Right. I I think that it's, it's a, a much bigger thing when you're going to lose it than like 10 years down the line and you already have, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. But I still think it should be uh, something that you don't doubt. Yeah. Or will he always doubt it? And he might as well get the first one out of the way. I don't think you'll always doubt it. I think people uh, come in, come into their own and get uh, and are ready for it. So in some sort of weird, bizarro world, I'm saying, yeah, go for it. Have sex with this person. And you're saying, let's wait. Don't have sex yet. Make sure it's a little bit more meaningful. You're not ready. Interesting. Yeah, it's weird. We really should have said, I should have said what you said. Yeah. You want to just re-record or maybe Freaky Friday it? We'll uh -huh. sort of sprint at each other full speed and see if we change our minds at the same time. Completely erect, see whose <laughs> dick touches the other guy first. Yeah. Some sort of erectile jousting situation. Oh, so yeah. instead of giving you uh, certainty, what we did was give you cases uh, in e either direction. That's nice. So if you're listening, uh, maybe you can cut the parts out. Uh, of the person talking that you disagree with. That way it seems like someone is at least uh, telling you exactly what to do. Yeah, we gave you two cases. You get to choose. You're welcome, I guess. Oh. Uh -huh. uh, all right. Thanks for listening to this episode. Thanks for listening at all. Our traffic is growing, actually. So if, thanks to continued support and, I guess, for telling your friends about the show. Keep telling your friends. Who knows? You guys are on a road trip. Maybe they would like us. You don't know. And maybe this is the first episode that somebody new is listening to. So thank you for joining us. Thoughts? Thoughts? Uh, let us know everything, whether it's a new theme song submission or a, a question of your own. Uh, if I were you show at gmail.com is the email address for everything. You guys are not emailing into a void. We are actually reading these emails. So it's ifireyoushow at gmail.com. Uh, the opening theme song was written by, gosh, it was that is an Icelandic hymn. Yeah. Oh, yeah, John Thorpe from Newcastle in England. There we go. Uh, and this closing one is written by Eric. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Eric, who resubmitted his theme song. Oh, that was another thing. Uh, if we haven't played your theme song and it was good, there's a chance I missed it. So don't. Well, I would say resubmit a theme song we haven't used yet. But don't resubmit it if we have used it, because mm. there's a chance I forgot. I'm going to put it in an episode. Then everyone's going to yell at me and say, actually use that in episode 102, and I'll feel a fool. So if we haven't actually played your theme song, resubmit it to us. Again, email address for everything is if I were you show at gmail.com. Happy Halloween. Toda for listening. We'll be back Whoa. next week. <laughs> and if you're in LA, come to our li uh, free Whoa. live show tomorrow. <laughs> we're doing a free live show at USC. Please come. Thank you. See you there. Bye. Later. If you got a problem, they can solve them. Yeah, this is a bad idea. This is Jake and the Music Fast Podcast Show. Doesn't matter cause it's all the same You should probably break up but don't even
don't give a fuck Or kick yourself in a Starbucks song Trails on the wall Pulling out doesn't work at all Then if you're a girl and you got class A sticky cucumber in your ass And she's a dime, she's a piece, she's a best eh? But she's sleeping with all your friends Oh cool, dad's gonna buy you a car Let's see some cheese wherever you are If I were you, I'd tell you what to do Qualified Jews And if it all goes wrong Do just write a theme song And send your emails to If I were you, show at gmail.com If I were you, show at gmail.com If I were you, show If I were you, show Oh, if I were you, show at gmail.com That was a HeadGum Podcast.